How's it going everyone? This is my Mlang. Welcome back to my channel where I'm not yet showing you what I've got in the back. Yes, I'm pretty happy and satisfied with what I've managed to do in the budget that I set for myself for this upgrade, update, whatever. But the idea is that this simplifies my workflow and also allows me to bring new content to the channel. So let's see where we were in 2016 and where we are in 2017. This is what continuous swapping of parts, adding new storage drives and general lack of maintenance got my PC looking like. Yes, it's a mess, but this is my main editing, productivity and gaming PC. Storage constraints have led me to keep adding SSDs or hard drives over time, but this was never enough. There's a constant library of games I have to keep on hand for testing, which occupies several hundred gigabytes. There's editing storage requirements and not least of all, drive speed aspects. So yes, this is the sad state my PC was in, it once had some cable management as far as the in-win iron clad case allowed at least, it even had a better motherboard that died and I went the cheap route and got a Z97 anniversary from ASRock, a board that is not exactly catering to the i7 overclocking crowd. And while this CPU cooler is surprisingly adept at removing heat from my i7 4790K, it rarely let me bump up the clocks on it above 4.5 GHz even in short benchmarking situations. So let's say goodbye to the old and hello to the new. I really wanted a fully acrylic window to display my stuff, I also wanted a better cooler to allow for safer temperatures at higher clocks and I wanted a lot of connect options on the motherboard, SATA and USB ports for all my different peripherals. So what did I exactly change apart from the case? Well, it's all of this, some of them have a definite performance aspect and some are just for looks. I got the ASUS Maximum 7 Gen motherboard which supports both Crossfire and SLI for future multi-GPU testing. It's also pretty damn adept at overclocking and is built like a tank, 8 SATA connections of which 7 are already populated and a slew of USB ports at the back. The Noctua NHD15 is probably still the best air cooler on the market but do take a look at the ginormous size of this thing. I have to mention here the extremely easy and solid mounting that Noctua sports, it's as easy as you can get while still offering excellent pressure on the CPU heat spreader. I added a lot of storage to this build, one 512GB KC400 Kingston SSD which has sustained read and write speeds, a 240GB Kingston UV400 which I decided to place at the front solely due to looks as it's not my best, largest or fastest SSD, I actually ran out of SATA cables on my PSU so this is not up and running at the moment as I'm waiting on a Molex to SATA adapter to arrive. There's also another 60GB SSD used only as cache for editing and a 2TB Seagate hard drive as raw storage. With the other SSDs and hard drives I already had, this PC now has a total of 1.17TB of fast SSD storage, 3TB of raw storage at the hard drives and another 1.7TB of off PC storage so to call it. This should be plenty storage for games, apps and OS on the SSDs and video depository for 4K raw camera footage and backups on the hard drives. I'm mainly using two graphics cards right now, either my AIO RX 480 or the GTX 1070, depending on what I'm playing and what horsepower I require. The AIO RX 480 is not an easy swap, the 1070 is however, so the RAD will have to stay in place no matter what as I don't want to keep losing time getting it off of there for nothing. Back in my previous video I mentioned that I'll explain the little trouble that I had when mounting this intake RAD. The holes on the front of the case are made mainly with 140mm fans in mind and there's just not enough options for 120mm ones. I wanted to interpose the metal frame between the fans and rad but due to some protrusions this is impossible unless you search for a specific length of screw. Too long it'll perforate the rad to short like those I have and they won't be able to reach the threads on the rads due to these protrusions. I managed to get around this by separately fixing the rad and fans though but the rad is however only held in two screws as a result of limited fixing options on the case front. My case airflow is a bit unconventional I know, but this is dictated by the fact that horizontally mounting the Noctua NHD15 on this motherboard would block my first PCIe slot, which I need, I mean this was actually one of the pros of switching my motherboard. So I oriented it vertically and set it to exhaust, and in turn the back 140mm is set to intake and blowing directly on the heatsink. 
The 240mm front rad is intake and part of the warm air it blows into the case is exhausted by the top 140mm Fantex fan. So far this has been working, of course GPU temperatures are excellent in the high 40s. It was mainly the CPU I was worried about, but I managed the stable 4.8GHz at 1.28V and it hovers around high 60s, low 70s in CPU intensive games and high 70s, actually mid to high 70s while encoding videos. To spruce things up a bit, since this is mainly a black and red build barring the white Fantex fans, I use sleeved Fantex red extension cables for the ATX 24 pin, the PCA connector and the CPU power. And the piezo resistance is the NZXT Hue Plus unit with 4 LED strips. I managed not only to live with RGB in the year of our RGB lore 2016, but actually got to like it, on some components at least, as I still find it useless on others. The Hue Plus, while a bit pricey, is a great kit for two reasons. They LEDs are pretty high quality, reasonably bright and offer punchy colors, and the second is the software which is just excellent and allows for numerous customization of your lighting. A fairly easy to set up unit despite the many cables required to run it, but I think the front spot is excellent for the Hue Plus unit and its white strip of light. At the back is just a huge bunch of wires which I don't care about since they can't be seen under that shroud. Also ran out of SATA cables and had to use spare yellow ones lying around and actually painted parts of them black to not ruin my color scheme of course. All in all, this case is pretty roomy at the back as well as inside and there's little you can hide under that shroud. I ordered only two extra SSD brackets since I forgot about the last SSD mounting spot under the shroud, but this would still not have been enough since I'm running 5 SSDs and there's only 4 total locations on the Pro-M. It's a pretty silent PC all in all, even under load, temps are great, it looks good and has a ton of storage on it. The only meaningful upgrade to this rig would be a much faster CPU able to reduce encoding times. That would be either an overclocked Zen or a 6 core Intel X99 platform. Zen is not yet out and we don't know the final performance and X99 is not something I'm necessarily interested at the moment. Either options require an overhaul with a new motherboard, new RAM and of course CPU. We will see what upgrade path is open to us later in the year. So is this going to be the final form of this PC for 2017? We'll just have to wait and see what exactly I'll use to further improve and upgrade my PC in this new year. But meanwhile, I want to see your comments, questions and suggestions down below. I want to see what you think about this build. What can I improve? What can I modify? And thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing. See you next time, everybody. Bye bye.